Hey, so my name's Nadia and I am going to film a haul video for you. This is going to be a mixture of beauty products and some clothes and um, some accessories. So let's get right into it. Uh, I will start with um, lip products because this desk chair is like bothering. Doesn't it make my head look big? <laughs> so anyway. I'm going to start with lip products. Um, I was looking for a new lip balm, and lip balm is notoriously, a good lip balm is notoriously difficult to find. I mean, I feel like everybody has a certain thing that they look for in a lip balm, and um, I don't know, like, just 90% of the ones that I've tried, and I've tried many of them, just do not work for me. Um, so I picked up this um, Jack Black Intense Therapy Lip Balm in the scent Lemon and Shea Butter, and it's got SPF 25, and um, as you can tell, I'm filming this on my MacBook, so you're not going to be able to really see anything clearly, so I'm just going to put um, everything, all the information about the products that I talk about either in the video as an annotation or below. So um, anyway, I got that from Sephora and I don't like it. It's, first of all, I'm very particular about the way uh, lip products taste and smell. And I don't know if this is the particular scent. This is the first Jack Black lip product that I've tried. I don't know if it's the scent or the fact that it has um, SPF 25 in it, but it tastes weird to me. And I drink a lot of water, especially, you know, I wear lip balm at night after I take off my makeup and I drink, you know, water at night um, to hydrate and make sure I, I'm getting my water intake that I didn't get during the day, whatever. So <laughs> anyway, um, it tastes weird to me. And I... And beyond that, it has a lot of petrolatum in it, but it's got 40.2% petrolatum, but I feel like it dries out my lips. Like, of course, initially, your lips are very moisturized, feels very good, but in the long run, I feel like it actually dries my lips out and they just feel parched. And it's summertime and it, my lips really shouldn't be all that dry, you know what I mean? Um, so I have been using, actually... Something I really liked is the Urban Decay Rehab Makeup Prep Lip Love. And it's got shea butter and coconut oil, whatever. Um, I don't really think, you know, when when people, when companies put like shea butter, uh, coconut oil, or any type of other oil in the product, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's moisturizing. I've had plenty of products that have uh, tons of moisturizing ingredients, but um, in the end, they're just not um, moisturizing. So anyway, I actually did really love this. I think it's meant to be a primer. So um, it's actually very emollient, and I think they mean you, they mean for you to put this on before you apply your lipstick. So ideally you would, you know, put this on after you've washed your face um, and while you're applying your makeup and then you'd blot it off and apply your lipstick. But I actually had been using it for that as well as just a regular lip balm and I really, really like it. But I think it was like $30, which I'm willing to pay. I'm willing to pay for a good lip balm, but I kind of just wanted to see what else was out there. And if I'm not mistaken, I got this um, this Jack Black one on sale. Was it on sale at Sephora? Now that I say that, I don't know. But I, there's a reason I picked this one up. I think it was just um, a lot cheaper than the Urban Decay one. Um, so, but I, I don't recommend that at all. I recommend the Urban Decay one. Actually, the Urban Decay lip balm is the best one that I've, that I've tried in years. And I've tried, like I said, I've tried many of them. So, um, the next things are lipsticks, which are some of my favorite things. I went to, actually, this is one that I picked up yesterday at the drugstore. And I typically don't 
purchase drugstore lipsticks and it's not because I am a like snob or anything and think like drugstore is bad or anything but I think I had just have a very poor experience with L'Oreal's lipsticks because I tried one and the way they smell makes me gag like first of all okay just a mini rant really quickly I don't like that um it's 2018 and cosmetic companies are still putting fragrance in things like makeup and skincare. Uh, that really, really irritates me. Um, I don't think those things should be fragrance. I think they are narrowing the scope of their demographic because you're basically um, eliminating people that have sensitive skin that are sensitive to fragrance that would otherwise probably really enjoy your product. And I understand that, you know, especially things like lipsticks, they don't smell the best if you don't put fragrance over it. But then you put the like atrocious, like old lady rose scent in it or the L'Oreal one, which I don't even remember what it smells like, to be honest with you. I just remember that I had to throw it out because I, it was that bad. So I had not ventured into drug drugstore lipsticks for a while. I think I got one Revlon. Um, sorry, I was shaking my chair. Um, <laughs> I think I got one Revlon uh, matte, like liquid lipstick that does, to, I think I don't think that one has a fragrance, but anyway, that I I really enjoyed that one. So anyway, yesterday I I went to the drugstore and I picked up this um, CoverGirl uh, Queen collection, and I think CoverGirl's Queen collection is um, marketed toward people with deeper skin tones, which is kind of cool. Um, and some of their lipstick shades were actually really really pretty. So. This is the Stay Luscious um, formula of that of that line, and the color is Duchess Q720. And I doubt you're gonna even be able to see the true color, but it's like a deep um, berry kind of color. It's really really pretty on, and I think that this would actually look really good on. Uh, most skin tones including like from very fair to very deep because it's not like a it's not like one of those like ox blood really really dark vampy lipsticks um it's just a pretty deep berry color um the only thing i would say about this this lipstick is the formula is kind of weird, so it's not meant to be a matte, which I'm, I'm so over mattes. I probably will never buy a matte lipstick again unless, you know, it's a very unique color. I'm just so over the whole, like, matte, cracked, dry lip, <laughs> dry lip look. Like, I, I'm done. I'm done with that. Um, let's move on. So, um... But they do have, in the Queen Collect, CoverGirl Queen Collection, they do have some matte lipsticks. But this one was meant to be, like, kind of a glossy lipstick, um, formula, rather. And I think that it actually is more of a satin. And it does kind of warm to your lips and become a little bit more glossy and emollient. But I think it's... A true satin rather than um, rather than you know a shine or a cream lipstick but I, I really enjoy that one so I kind of want to pick up some more and um, see what else they have so next are a couple of Urban Decay lipsticks and I had actually never tried Urban Decay lipsticks but when I was on Sephora the other week both of these were on sale for some reason. Maybe they're the colors being discontinued, but they were eight bucks each. And I was like, um, I don't really think I can pass that up. Like, even if I don't like them, I can mix them with something or, you know, for eight bucks, like that's, I couldn't pass up that deal. So I got colors in two different finishes. One is a cream, which is a very opaque, like kind of glossy finish and the other one is a sheer 
and it's a glossier like sheer color um, and truthfully I'm a little bit embarrassed to say that I have been obsessing over over um, Meghan Markle's makeup ever since um, her wedding and I've looked at all of the pictures that get released about her <laughs> um, including her hair and her makeup and I noticed that she wears like these really demure like understated light pink lips with some smudge liner and some like bronzy blush and I think it just looks so beautiful even though it's understated you know um, so I had I don't, I don't think I owned actually any light pink lipsticks before I purchased this but this is the color obsessed again by Urban Decay and it's kind of like a Barbie pink but it's sheer so it doesn't go on um, opaque like this and it doesn't look um, garish or anything it actually looks very pretty and just soft so I actually really really like this and I want to get more colors like this it's like the thing where you find something you like and then you're like I have to have 50 of the same color now and yeah, I don't know why because I have this color and I like this color so I don't just wear this but now I'm really like on the hunt for more colors like that and then this is a really pretty um, orange red and it's called Bang and again by Urban Decay and like I said it's the cream finish so this is actually very opaque and this is kind of like in your face you kind of want to be feeling very confident that they wear these um, uh, but I really like it that's like an orange pink I'm sorry an orange red and I think it looks really good with like um, like a black and white polka dot shirt or even like a, a white like graphic tee with a denim jacket over it or something like that like I think that looks really really oops, sorry that was loud that looks really really cute okay so the next thing is just random other beauty products and I recently saw that Sephora now has their clean section on their website and the clean section is supposed to be a collection of products by different brands that supposedly don't contain like a number of harmful ingredients and I don't remember at the moment what the ingredients are but basically to meet the clean standard the um, the product can't contain certain ingredients so when I saw that section on Sephora my eyes got huge I don't know why but maybe it's like pandering to people who you know get sucked into things that are more natural um, and maybe I am a fool for falling for it, but I just wanted like everything in that list. Like I moved so many things to my wish list <laughs> from the clean section, but I only, I, you know, I was, you know, not bad. I only purchased a couple of things. So the first one is this Josie Marin, um, Vibrancy, uh, cream, product uh sorry cream palette it's called the vibrancy argan oil face fresh face palette paint oh the vibrancy <laughs> argan oil fresh face paint palette and it's basically got a number of um cheek colors and you can use them on your lips and they say a couple of colors are not safe to use on the eyes but i have used them on my eyes with no issue and I adore this palette. I'm very sorry that it is dirty, but I have been using the heck out of it. So um, a couple of these, like this one and this one, I use, this one is supposed to be kind of like a contour color. And this one is supposed to be kind of like a cheek color. This is a highlighter. And then this is kind of a deeper highlighter or cheek color. And I have used them, like I said, on my cheeks, on my lips, on my eyes. And they're so, 
so pretty. And I think what makes them unique is from other cream products that I have. I have a couple from Becca and I have some from MAC. And these are actually super sheer. So they are really easy to blend and really uh, manageable to build. So, um, and I think the, the highlighter is probably the best cream highlighter that I've ever tried. And I think you'd like it if you like a more subtle, um, not like blingy Instagram highlight if you just want like kind of a natural glow, which is the kind of highlight that I like. Um, I think you'd like that palette and it's recyclable. So I don't know if you can see, but basically I believe that they mean for you to pop out the pans when you're done with them and you can refill the palette. It said recyclable in the product description, so I'm assuming that's what they mean by recyclable. But I think that's really cool because a lot of companies, that's something else that I think about a lot, is the waste that we generate with um, all the pans and the bottles and everything that we use. Because some sometimes um, cosmetic packaging is not recyclable, especially if it has product in it still. Um, and so that's just something I think about, honestly, and I don't know. Anyways, that's stupid, whatever. Um, so another thing that I purchased from the clean section is this Playa Ritual Hair Oil. And I did not need another hair serum, but alas, I am just purchasing them left and right. So it's got um, oils of kukui, apricot, and sunflower. And let's see what else it says. Natural Beauty California. And so this is kind of cool. I've never actually had a hair oil quite like this. Um, it's meant to impart weightless shine and polish. So um, the dispenser is actually a dropper. So you can see you click the little top of it and it dispenses as a dropper, but the opening of the package is also so narrow. It's actually actually sufficiently narrow that if you didn't want to use the dropper, that um, you could just like tip the bottle into your hand and use it that way. And I like this oil so far. Um, I don't know if it's moisturizing enough for my hair. Um, it is a, an extremely light oil. So just to tell you a little bit about my hair, it is double processed. I have the Japanese straightening treatment on it, on it and I have colored it. Um, well, I've deposited color. I haven't lightened the color since I've had the straightening treatment done, but I've deposit, deposited a darker color because I do have some grays. So, um, I have colored it a few times. So anyway, it's pretty dry and it, it needs a lot of care. So, um, I look for things that are super moisturizing, but not, but nothing that's going to weigh my hair down. And I do like this. So what I've, so what I've been using it for is I don't think it's a, a good, like everyday oil for me. I need something a little bit heavier, but when I, after I washed my hair, I actually put this on my damp hair and braid my hair or put it up or whatever for it to dry. And I think it smooths my hair and makes it pretty soft. Um, but as an everyday sort of product, I'll, I'll, I use something that I'll show you now that I also picked up recently. And, if, and again, it's because of Meghan Markle. She said, I think it was a long time ago, she gave an interview for a magazine. She said she uses this <laughs> hair oil. But you guys, every time I see her, her hair is so shiny. Like, how does she do that? <laughs> I need that in my life. So anyway, I was like... I'm going to try the one she uses. Of course, like you always think you're going to pick up a product and it's going to make your hair, you know, as shiny as that person, but it never does. But anyway, I actually do like this product. So it's the Wella Professionals CR 
oil reflections luminous smoothing oil and it was a little bit pricey actually but I think that is the nature of um, Wella products sorry my computer went to sleep I think um, so like I was saying it's it's the Wella professionals oil reflections luminous smoothing oil and this is just the the original version it does come in a light version but like I said my hair is very dry so I picked up the original and um, I actually really like this to use as an everyday oil before I either curl my hair or blow dry it or use any type of heat styling um, just to add a little bit of shine and just to kind of smooth the cuticle or make the cuticle appear a little bit smoother and tighter um, so those two hair things are my are part of my regular routine these days the next thing is I actually have a couple of deluxe samples of this I didn't pick up the full version the full size yet but it's the Becca ultimate coverage 24 hour foundation and I am somebody who loves full coverage foundation um, I don't typically actually even use it all over my face. I kind of just use it around my nose and under my eyes and over my eyebrows because I find that uh, putting foundation over my eyebrows actually helps my eyebrow gel or pencil or whatever I'm using that day to go on a lot easier or and, and last a lot longer. So um, I just put the foundation where I need it but I love love full coverage I don't really care for um, uh, light to medium coverage and it, it's not like that I have a lot to cover but I do have like I said a lot of redness around my nose and I do have dark circles under my eyes so this is the Becca like I said ultimate coverage 24 hour foundation and I got the color driftwood and for reference I'm in between an NC30 and NC35. In the summertime, I do self-tan, so I'd probably be closer to an NC35, but I don't self-tan my face. I just kind of self-tan my neck and down and um, like just use bronzer on my face. I'm not wearing this today. I'm wearing actually a Tarte foundation today, but I actually really, really like this foundation, and I am going to pick up the full size. One thing that I will say, and after I just made that rant about uh, companies that put fragrances in products, <laughs> this product is not fragranced, and I'm grateful for that, but it does smell like paint, <laughs> and it's not a strong enough smell to deter me from using the product, but um, just be aware. If you decide to try it, don't be shocked that it actually smells like paint. Okay, and this next product, I'm actually, <laughs> what is wrong with me? I don't know. Um, believe it or not, I'm actually kind of tired. Maybe I'm just loopy. I, I look like or feel like or sound like that I'm over-caffeinated, but I'm not. Um, anyway, I really, really am excited about this next product. So like I said, I do self-tan. I use St. Tropez, the, um, the darkest version of it. I don't know the name of it. The bronzest one. Um... And occasionally, like on special occasions or knowing I look extra cute, um, I use this, which is the Coco Cabana Bronze Glow Oil. And this is the darker version. They have two colors. This is the darker one of those. And so basically, it's not a self tanner. It's um, a bronze illuminator. So it's basically kind of like a dry oil with a little bit of bronze pigment in there and shimmer. And it is very shimmery. So you should know if you're going to use this, you can expect a little bit of transfer. But the good thing is that the um, the shimmer is not chunky. It's actually very fine, like very pretty shimmer. And when your legs or wherever your you know your decollete or arms or whatever hit the sunlight, it's just so beautiful. Like I would recommend this for date night or you know. A special occasion I actually put this on to go to work today so <laughs> I don't know why I just felt like it um, 
but it's so pretty and it makes me just feel like very pretty and put together and just very cute. So um, I'm, I'm really loving this and I think I'll definitely be repurchasing that when I run out. And the next products are a couple of cheap products and I know this video is getting long. I actually didn't anticipate it would be that long. But um, this is NARS Luster. So I actually have never owned Luster before. I was actually looking for Madly, which is my favorite blush of all time, NARS or otherwise. Um, I have, I still have like a very old one that has very little left in the pan. But for some reason, Sephora didn't have Madly. They had like every other color, and it wasn't as though it was sold out or anything. It just wasn't on the site at all. So I was like, oh my god, did they discontinue it? But I saw it at I think Nordstrom. So I don't think it's discontinued, I just think Sephora doesn't have it for some reason, which is kind of weird to me. But anyway, um, Luster seemed like a good, not dupe really, but it seemed like in the same sort of vein, which is kind of very understated, but a little bit of shimmery. Um, I actually have it on today in addition with in addition to the next cheek product that I'm going to show you, and I'm really, really loving it. I still want my Madly, so the next time I place a Nordstrom's um, order, I will definitely pick that up because that's my, like I said, my favorite um, blush of all time. But I, I really, really, really am enjoying Luster, so really happy about that. And then. The final beauty product, I believe, I did forget to bring something out here that I want to show you guys, but I will probably just talk about it in my next video. Um, the final beauty product I have is this Tom Ford bronzer. So um, it is in the color Terra, 02 Terra, and it's dirty, sorry, but I use it, so sorry. Um, I really like this bronzer. It is, I was afraid it wasn't going to be deep enough for my skin tone, but it actually is, and it's very, it's not sheer, but it is understated. I don't know how else to put it. It's not like a um, super pigmented bronzer that you have to be extra careful about applying or else it'll look muddy. It's just very easy to work with. Uh, very easy to blend out and it's been a good buy. So I just have a few clothing things that I'll show you and um, the majority of them are from Dorothy Perkins which is a UK site and it was actually the first order I placed from Dorothy Perkins and um, I actually got a few more things but there were shoes and they were too big so I was so disappointed because just really quickly, I wear size 5 or 4.5 to 5, and it's notoriously difficult for me to find shoes that fit. Even sometimes when things are marked size 5, they're still way too big. So when I saw that Dorothy Perkins had size 5 shoes, I ordered three pair, even though I'd never, <laughs> I'd never purchased from them before. And I was so excited because the shoes are so cute, but they are a size 36. And typically a 36 in um, most brands is a size 6 in the U.S. And they are just way, way too big. And I'm just like so bummed because I don't even know if it like, I know it's three pairs of shoes, but I don't even know if it's worth sending it back because I have to ship it back to the U.K. And like, I don't know. I haven't decided what I'm going to do with them yet. But, um, oh, first let me show you this ridiculous pair of glasses that I bought for no reason from ASOS because I don't ever see myself wearing these but it seemed like a good idea at the time so I bought them <laughs> and um yeah so I don't know they're like the little like trendy glasses that everybody that's way younger than me is wearing and I like like I said I would probably never wear these except like maybe on the weekend to I don't even know where. Like, I think they're cute. They're just, they're just a little bit. I don't know if I have the personality to pull them off, but I think they're kind of fun and whatever. If I decide I don't like them, I think like one of my little cousins will probably like it. So, 
Let me grab the um, the clothes really quickly. Oh, so um, so the first thing I want to show you is again inspired by Megan Morgan. You guys, Megan Megan Morgan, <laughs> Megan Markle. So the first thing, again, is inspired by Meghan Markle. You guys, I'm typically not, like, a celebrity, like, fanatic. I just think her style is so just perfect, and I don't know. I can't help myself. Um, but I, I got this hat, which, I again, where am I ever going to wear this? But I just think it's, like, so pretty. It's just a huge navy floppy hat. Let me see if I can try it on. It'll probably look ridiculous, but <laughs> um I've I've had a floppy hat this probably this large before, but um it was like a it was a more I don't know, um like a more casual one that you just wear to the beach, but this one's obviously got like a little bow. So I feel like you kind of have to wear it with maybe a dress or like a some slacks or something like a I think it would look really pretty actually with like a strapless sundress like that would look amazing and I don't I don't even think I own a strapless sundress so maybe I have to go buy one but anyway um that's my okay that's my last Meghan Markle thing I promise well for this video anyway so the next thing is this blazer and it's just a navy blazer that I actually haven't even worn yet. And I got it on, oh man, you can't even see it. It's just an open front blazer though. Um, it's navy even though it's probably showing up black. I got it at Express. It was on sale, I believe, maybe not. It doesn't even have the price on it. Um, we can see all, you see I have the tags on it because I haven't worn it yet. I just don't know. I mean, it's pretty easy to wear. I just don't, I don't know. Why haven't I worn this yet? I'm going to wear it next week, guys. I'm going to wear it next week to work. Wait, I'm going to wear it this week to work. We still have a couple more days of work, so I'll, I'll wear it this week. And then the next one is a another blazer. This is a cropped black blazer with um, with satin lapels. Jeez, I should have planned this out better, you guys. I'm sorry. Um, but this is from actually from Misguided. And that is, as I understand, another UK brand. But um, I really, really like this. Of course, it still has tags on it because I haven't worn it. Because this is actually, it's lined. Um, it's really, really well made. But I think it's just a little bit too warm to wear right now. Um, because every time I try it on, I just feel like super hot. So I don't know. It's in, like today it's like 98 degrees and I can't even just imagine like trying to wear this to work right now. Like, I don't know. So maybe it might cools off a little bit or I have a special occasion or something like that. Then I'll wear that. Um, this last dress is from, oops. This last dress, I'm sorry, it's not the last dress, but it's the last dress from Misguided, and I have worn this one. Um, you guys probably have no way of knowing this, but I actually work in IT, so um, quarterly we have a meeting. Well, I don't know what you, I don't know what you call it, like a, a meeting um, with a speaker, and usually like has brunch or whatever. So I wore it to that. Um, the last women in technology meeting in my in my chapter and I got so many compliments on it. It's a lot shorter actually than I thought it was gonna be because I'm five foot even. I'm not even tall. But I felt like it might be a little risque, especially since there's kind of like a little bit of a slip. It like opens a little bit. I don't know how to explain it, but it's really pretty, and I do think it's passable for work. And it was passable for that um, 
for that event where my CTO and CIO, that's the Chief Technology Officer and the Chief Information Technology Officer, were um, were present. They're both women, so yay, yay women. But anyway, um, I didn't feel like inappropriate, and so many people complimented me, so um, I really like that one. And the next, the last dress is from Dorothy Perkins, and it's by a brand called Blue Vanilla, and it's a tulip dress, which is like one of my favorite, favorite um, cuts of dresses, and the back looks like this. It has a gold zipper, which I love gold hardware on pretty much anything, but zippers especially on dresses, and it's got a tie here. And, you guys, the best thing about this dress is that it has pockets. I love dresses with pockets. Like, honestly, that would probably make me purchase a dress, <laughs> a dress if it has pockets. Um, and I love this little, like, I don't know what you call this. I'm sorry, I'm not, like, a fashion expert. But this little, like, seaming here, it just makes the dress look so... Um, I don't know the word expensive like just just fancy and it fits really well but it's a little bit tight this is a US size 4 and uh, I'm gonna need to go on a little bit of a diet because this is um it's tight I mean it's a little bit short it's above the knee it hits above the knee which is fine for work um, as long as it's not too short you know but if it's short and tight, I feel a little bit self-conscious wearing it to work, especially because, like I said, I work in IT infrastructure, and um, I our, our work environment is very casual, and so when I wear things like this, if it looks like, if it looks like, you know, maybe that's more appropriate for, like, a date night, or if it's, like, a little bit too sexy, I feel... Um, I feel self-conscious, whatever. So, um, anyway, no one's ever said anything to me about the way I dress or anything. I just, I don't know. It's just my own preference, I guess. And then the last and final thing, which I thought I had on a hanger, but this is from Dorothy Perkins as well. And it's just a little, um, like, open front lace blazer. And it's really cute. The way it fits is actually, oh, can you see? The way it fits is actually kind of boxy. It's not like a form-fitting blazer, so I think it would actually look really, 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 really pretty over, um, I'm, I'm just envisioning it with, like, a red sleeveless, I actually have one, a red sleeveless, um, fit and flare dress, you know, the ones that are fitted at the top, um, through the bust and then it's like kind of cinched at the waist and then they flare out I think that would look amazing with this or even like a red pencil dress would look amazing or even a red I, I don't know why I, have, I think red just looks so so good with navy so I'm just imagining all the red stuff I can wear with it but um anyway really really pleased with that stuff I'm really pleased oh the brand is called Lux by the way but it's from um what they say Dorothy Perkins so, um, I'm really pleased with all the Dorothy Perkins things I got, except the shoes. I'm so bummed. So, um, anyway, that is it for this haul. I think I'm going to come back later this week or this weekend with a, or at least make the video this weekend with a favorites because I have some non-beauty favorites that I want to share with you guys. And I'm, I don't know if who would be interested, but in case you are then I want to share them. So thanks so much for watching and I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your day and week and I hope to see you soon. All right, bye.